So, nani man ang maskulado, basta sa isling lang, okay? Okay. In her arms, how good to look upon in her hands, how perfect. That is the beauty of Sarah. The beauty of Sarah was a blessing to him, but in many situations, it causes him a problem. And that's number one problem is when you went to Egypt. Kasi sabi ni Abraham, napaka, napaka ganda mo. So dapat hindi akin sasabihin na mag-asawa tayo. Kasi pag nalaman nila na mag-asawa tayo, ano mangyayari? Papatayin nila, oh boy ka. <laughs> sabi ni Abraham. Bakit nagkaganong yung isip ni Abraham? Ano yung, ano yung, ano yung analysis natin last minute? Last Sunday? Why Abraham think and act like a non-believer? Because he what? He left his tent and his altar. Every time Abraham left his tent and his altar, then he think and he act like a non-believer. Okay, Sarah the beautiful. Now, next we have to go to the next slide. The life of Sarah as a wife and as a mother in the aspect of her weaknesses. The Abrahamic covenant of race began in Genesis chapter 12. Then, the call of Abraham is in Genesis chapter 12. The call has no explanation, but only confirmed by what? By a promise. Yes, if you're here, you will know. The call of Abraham has no explanation at all. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. God called him from the all of Chaldeans without explanation. Just go and live your country, okay? Live your, your kindreds and go to the land I will show you. There is the, the calling doesn't admit. The calling is purely with the grace of God. The calling has no explanation, but praise God every time God. God is calling His people, then it is being confirmed by what? By a promised blessing. Everybody say, blessing. Amen. Wow. This, this, Jesus chapter 2, verses 2 to 3. Anong sabi ng Panginoon in this calling? I will make you. This is what? Will be. Then, chapter 12, 2 to 3. Then. I will make you. Will be. I will bless you. This is what? Prosperity. I will magnify your name. I will make your name great. This is what? Prominence. I will bless those who bless you. This is what? Loyalty. I will curse those who curse you. This is what? Security. I will make you. Okay? Will be, I will bless you. This is prosperity. I will magnify your name. I will make your name great. This is what? This is this is prominence. I will bless those who bless you. This is loyalty. And I will curse those who curse you. This is security. The promise is the commissioning of the calling. I tell you that once again. God repeated the word, I will, I will, I will. How many times? Five times. This came from the mouth of the truthful, faithful, and the powerful God. This call is purely by God's grace. Then Abraham must have to obey God absolutely. But that's what we know. Last Sunday, partial obedience. Abraham had obeyed God in this call partially. And partial obedience simply means what? This. Of Jesus. He forgot why Abraham always partially obeyed God. Again? Because he what? He forgot his what? His sin and his altar. Don't forget that. It's so difficult to obey God absolutely if you don't have with you the, the principle of a tent and the principle of an altar. This time, Abraham was 75 years old. When God called him in Genesis chapter 12, Abraham was 75 years old. Then 10 years have passed. Nothing happened. Huwag niyo kalimutan. Sarah in her what? In her witness. Genesis chapter 12. 
people God called them. Abraham was 75 years old. Ten years have passed. No son, no blessing. Ten years of waiting, nothing happened. How do we know that? Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 to 3. Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children. But she had an Egyptian maidservant named Hagar. Verse 2. Verse 2. Then, so she said to Abraham, The Lord has kept me from having children. I have a suggestion. What's the suggestion? Go sleep with my maidservant. Perhaps I can build the family through her. And Abraham agreed to what Sarah said. Verse 3. How do we know that it was 10 years of waiting and nothing happened? In verse 3. Okay. So after Abraham had been living in Canaan, how many years? 10 years. 10 years of waiting. 10 years of hoping. Nothing happened. Now what is the first witness of Sarai as a wife and as a mother? Ano yun ang kanina doon sa agabi? Sarah was so impatient in waiting on the promises of God. Anong sabi ni Sarah? Honey, 10 years na wala pa rin nangyayari sa buong taong na 15, 6 15, 5 to 6 chapter 15, 5 to 6 yun yan chapter 15 this is 5 to 6 the Lord confirmed His promise to Abraham and to Sarai 15 so God, the angel of the Lord took Abraham outside of his tent and said Look up at the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, then he said to you, shall your offspring be. Ganyan karami ang magiging ano, ang magiging anak mo. Ganyan karami ang magiging, kung sa'yo nung buwan, ang kabikahan mo, mga anak sa anak mo. Like the what? Like the, ganyan karami. Ako na kadamo those stars. Kadao, can you count the stars? You cannot count the stars. But the problem is, in chapter 16 of Kekena, 15 verses, Abraham believed God. And it makes him righteous. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. But not Sarah. Not Sarah. Sarah becomes so impatient of God. He becomes, she becomes what? In her week, this is the first witness of Sarah. She becomes so impatient on God. What does it mean? Sarah gave God a time frame. That's her first witness as what? As a wife and as a mother. After a home, honey, darling, 10 years now, what happened in the Sarah, you stars. Hanggang ngayon, wala pa ako. Hindi pa ako na, no? Wala pa rin ako. Hindi pa rin ako nakahanap ng mangga. <laughs> wala nga 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 eh. Sa pangako ng Diyos, mukhang mapapako, honey. Ten years of waiting and hoping for the, uh, for the promises of God. Nothing happened. Sarah said, 